you know, Mangalam, without really giving away your age, what was the first ca family car you guys had? Well, why not give away my age? When I was born, I don't think cars were invented. Mankind was still walking around on horses, etc. And if you fast forward it to the 70s when you actually arrived. I wasn't born in the 70s. It was much later than that. Uh, I think the first family car was Maruti 800 or perhaps a Fiat. Yeah, that's what you saw on the road back those days, right? But now if you step out of your homes and offices, every second car seems to be an SUV, doesn't it? Yes, a little elephant on the road blocking the traffic, but looks very comfortable from inside, I guess. It's only in the last few years, I guess, it's become more affordable and more popular with Indians and this seemingly insatiable demand for SUVs in India and the opportunity that that presents for car makers is what is on top of mind today. This is Mad About Markets. All right, so let's then drive straight to the point. Let's mm. crunch some numbers as we do here on Mad About Markets. According to Databridge, the global sport utility vehicle or the SUV market was valued at $35 billion in 2021. It's expected to drive all the way to $105 billion by 2029. What does that mean? A compounded average growth of nearly 15% annually for the next seven years. So from $35 billion goes all the way up to $105 billion. But yeah. here's a deal clincher. Yeah. Are you an SUV person or a sedan person? I'm always a sedan person, but like we always say, you never know. You never know. And that's why we're friends. I'm a sedan person as well. But you know, globally, we have seen a move towards SUVs. Yeah. The obvious market, if you just take a look at uh, the United States, which is the biggest SUV market in the world, one out of uh, five out of every 10 passenger vehicles are SUVs, so that's about 52%. But increasingly, we are seeing uh, more adoption of SUVs in Europe as well, which was traditionally a sedan uh, a country, or a sedan continent, so to say. 45% in Europe uh, is, uh, you know, the SUV market share versus the overall passenger uh, vehicle market. And in China, it's 48%. But come to India, you know, we've traditionally been a small car hatchback sort of market, but the rise of SUVs has been phenomenal from yeah. low teens to now around 38% as of FI21. We're number fourth. But yeah. growing very fast. That is as of FI21 and we're closing the gap with some of the larger countries because the share of SUVs in the overall passenger vehicle market, it was just about 13% when you talk about 2015, just a few years back. Now that started to grow steadily and as of 2020, it was 29%. But cut to 2021, in just one year, it went from there to all the way to 38% like Manglam was just pointing out. And this year, the share is expected to have improved even further. Now this is reflected in what is the growing share of SUVs in the overall car sales in India. Take Hyundai, for instance. I mean, that is one of the companies to talk about because, you know, from 2015, when SUVs had a 9% share in their entire sales, now it accounts for almost half of the entire total. And come 2025, it gets even better because SUV sales are expected to contribute 55% to the overall sales for Hyundai and other car makers are similarly seeing these kind of trends. And Hyundai's launch was actually, you know, quite well received. Well, it's that time now to welcome all our guests on the show today. And we have a lineup, quite a lineup of guests. We have Shashank Srivastava, who's the executive director of Maruti Suzuki. We also have with us Tarun Garg, who's the director of sales and marketing at Hyundai Motor India. And with us on the program, we have Gaurav Gupta, who's the chief commercial officer of MG Motor India. And to sum it all, we have Bertrand D'Souza, who's the editor-in-chief of Overdrive India. Thanks a lot, gentlemen, for joining us. Shashank, let's uh, come to you first. What took Maruti so long to announce a string of SUVs? You missed the initial big rally post Greta, didn't you? Uh, actually, uh, if you talk of the mid SUV segment, uh, which is where Creta, Seltos, uh, the Grand Vitara operates, uh, we did introduce the S Cross, uh, and we were the first to do so. However, uh, it wasn't really a pure SUV; it was a crossover vehicle, and I think the market uh, was not prepared to accept that, so it was slightly ahead of time. So it is not as if the trend in the market was missed. It was probably the product that we brought in that segment did not uh, suit the times. And as far as the entry SUV segment is concerned, there, uh, uh, of course, Brezza has changed the situation because it was the, uh, one of the first uh, uh, entry SUV vehicles introduced in 2016 and has been the market leader ever since. And recently, very recently, we had upgraded it with the new Brezza, which is also doing exceedingly well. So to uh, answer to, to your point, in, to your question in summary, I don't think the trend was missed. Uh, in the entry SUV, I think uh, we have been fairly successful. Brezza has been the market leader. Uh, but uh, in mid SUV, I do admit that while the trend was not missed, but the product that we launched probably uh, was ahead of the times. 
Well, Maruti there is one of the market leaders, but Tarun, how do you maintain your competitive edge? And this is especially tricky given that, uh, you know, your own company, Kia, has been expanding in the market, sort of cannibalizing on your own share. Look, uh, I think the idea is to really keep on raising the benchmark. Frankly speaking, in 2015, SUVs used to contribute only 13.5% to the overall Indian auto market. And that is when we launched the Creta. And uh, I may say with all humility that, you know, that set the ball rolling as far as SUVs in India is concerned. And if you see in 2022, 41% uh, of the uh, auto sales are now coming from SUVs, which is more than hatches even. You know, who could have imagined this to happen? As far as Hyundai is concerned, we were the market leaders in calendar year 20 as well as calendar year 21. Yes, I think, yes, calendar year 22, so many new launches have happened. You talked about Kia and other competition as well. At the same time, if you look at Hyundai, the range keeps on going up. For example, you know, Tucson. Uh, we were selling about 1,000 to 1,500 Tucson a year. And now the new Tucson, we already have received uh, close to 6,000 bookings. And we are now looking at a sale of 5,000 Tucson's a year. So I think the benchmark is going up. And the advantage which Hyundai enjoys is that along with petrol, we also have a diesel and a turbo option. Then we have automatics. And there are also not only DCTs which are raising the bar, but now we have the 8-speed AT in diesel in Tucson. So the, we are trying to really raise the benchmark, which really keep, gives the customer so many options and an access to the global technologies. All right, you're trying to raise the benchmark. But Gaurav, you know, coming to you now, uh, SUVs are eating into the share of sedans and hatchbacks. How much more can the SUV market go from here? I mean, the share of UVs in passenger vehicles has actually grown to about 48%. You see, uh, we have to look at fundamentally why are consumers moving to SUV. Uh, we look at it at a very high level. If you see the SUV trend, is there one because of the consumer preference of the entire stance of the vehicle or the looks of the vehicle uh, there is a sense of aspiration towards the body cell of the suv and at the same time i think the road conditions also prefer an suv in the country as we speak so therefore the uh, the suv trend which has been seen in the last seven to eight years is expected to stay uh, the draw definitely has been largely in the space also between the 10 to 25 lakh rupees segment, which has seen a huge growth right now. In fact, as a market overall, that is about 35% of the Indian car industry. All right, gentlemen, hold your thoughts. Now that we've established that the SUV trend is here to stay, who is really winning the market share game? Now in India, Maruti was one of the leading players in the market, but this was until last year because things have started to change drastically as of this year. Tata Motors is now leading this race with a close to 19% market share of the first quarter, followed by Maruti, which is about 17.4%. A close third is m, &M with 16.2% of the market. Hyundai Hyundai and Kia are the fourth and the fifth largest, but if you combine them, because uh, Kia is owned by uh, Hyundai, they emerge as the largest player, taking over from Maruti and Tata Motors, but individually, it is Tata Motors that is leading the pack. So contrary to the long-held view that India is still a small cars market, enough and more indicators here to show that there is a clear shift in consumer preference towards SUVs. There is a clear shift and it has been gradual as well. You and I have seen that on the roads ourselves, but there has actually been an interesting report done by Crystal to, you know, break this down and trace this growth. If you just take a look at the four phases of SUV growth, say the first one from 2002 to 2012, and that is where the UV share, uh, we had about 11 models for sale in the segment, and that is when we had the big launches, the likes of Bolero, Innova, Scorpio, and the utility vehicle share was anywhere between 14 to 17% of the overall, uh, you know, market. And that is when the market actually grew moderate, moderately. The second phase that started post-2012, the big change was when we saw the names uh, like Duster, Ertiga, EcoSport, XUV500, all of them come by. And the idea was that SUVs didn't really have to be costly. They really had to be practical and affordable for city driving. So as a result of which the UV share from 14 to 17% jumped to around 21 odd percent. 
Then you move on to the third phase of growth and that started from 2016 to 2019. And the biggest reason was the launch of Creta followed by the launch of Vitara and Brezza by Maruti itself. As a result of which, these cars, which were much favoured by the audience, we saw the UV share jump from 21% to 28%. So in the three phases, it jumped from what, around 14% to 28%. It has actually doubled. And then came the big jump with, uh, you know, launches like uh, we had the Kia, Celtos, Sonnet, Hector, then Venue, etc. But, you know, Kia, uh, Kia's entry in the market really did extremely well for everyone. And as a result of which, the UV share has jumped from 28% to 48%. So from 2002, through these four phases, as we speak, we've seen the UV share jump from, what, 14% to 48%. And like you said, the huge phase of growth, that is the fourth phase of growth starting 2019. And now, almost half of the market is dominated by SUVs. Shashank, let me bring you back in. You know, what kind of SUVs will you be looking at? Entry level, mid-segment, that's the first one you've just recently launched. Uh, or will Maruti also look to enter the premium SUV brand? And what about electric vehicles? What are your plans on that front? Yeah, so uh, actually we are uh, a very customer focused organization and we uh, we follow what the market and sometimes lead uh, where, what the consumers uh, really want. So we did come with the, uh, if you remember a long time back with the Swift, which was the uh, premium hatch at that time, the Bellino, which was uh, also uh, sort of uh, started that segment. Um, so also there was Artiga, uh, the Brezza uh, and so on. Uh, so, so we will follow the market and we have found in recent years, the SUV segment has been gaining a lot of traction. In fact, over the last three years, it has increased from 26% to more than 40% now and growing. So uh, obviously, uh, entry SUV and the mid SUV are the two segments within the SUV space, which are fairly large. So Tarun, uh, what about you? When you guys have products in the petrol, diesel, turbo range, etc. What about uh, Hyundai's launch pipeline in the EVs? Look, uh, in 2019, we launched the Kona, which was the first SUV in electric space. And this has really helped us to know the EV customer more. Uh, you would have already seen that we have announced the introduction of Ionic 5 in India very soon. And Ionic 5 is already the world car of the year, the world design of the year, and world electric car of the year. So I, for one, is very, very excited with this, So, which will mean that we will now have two vehicles in the SUV electric space. We already announced that by 2028, we will have six battery electric vehicles, most of which will be in the SUV space. So I think uh, the approach is very much there. The direction is very much clear. And uh, going forward, you will see more and more electric vehicles coming from the Hyundai plan as well in India. All right. So six EV vehicle launches lined up in the near future. But uh, let's sum that up then. You know, what are the trends emerging in the electric vehicle space? Of course, largely we're still seeing the diesel and more than that, the petrol variants come into the market. Well, clearly the trend is going to be towards SUVs, MPVs or large longer sedans, longer than the four uh, meter length. And that's essentially because uh, while some of the manufacturers like Tata, Nexon, the EV has done phenomenally well for them, uh, what is clear to see that, you know, to get higher range out of these, you need a larger battery pack. And those larger battery packs can only be accommodated. They, they will occupy a lot more space inside the vehicle. So you need a larger vehicle. And SUVs clearly uh, are the way forward for that. SUVs or MPVs also for that matter. Uh, so what we're clearly seeing is that because of electrification, uh, the need is to have larger vehicles. The Mercedes-Benz clearly came out earlier this year and mentioned, for instance, globally, that they would be moving away from certain body styles, which would mean the compact sedans and hatchbacks that they that that they developed for global markets uh, would, would you know completely go away and they would move towards larger body lines for that matter so uh, this is going to be a challenge for the automotive, automotive industry unless and until batteries get denser and they're able to provide a lot more range with more compact batteries that's not happening anytime soon all right gentlemen we've been talking about how suvs have been eating into the share of the smaller cars the sedans and the hatchbacks but here's what numbers actually say to prove if or not that theory is true now look at the period between fi 18 and 22 small cars production is actually half uh, almost from 42 to 26 so similar is the story with large cars uh, now down to about 12 launches as of fi 22 whereas the utility vehicles or the suv space that has been growing steadily and even after the pandemic it has been able to come back uh, to the kind of launches if not higher than what we saw in the last few years 
Now, within the SUVs, uh, the cars that are being launched has a lot to do with the taxes that go along with these cars. So let's look at the GSC differential because that is a huge factor. Now, that depends on the body length, the fuel type, and the usage of these cars. Now, in the sub four meter length segment, cars with petrol engines are displacing the less than uh, 1.2 liter engines, and that is the most popular category in India, attracting taxes of anywhere between 29 to 31 percent, depending on the model, whether it is petrol or diesel. Similarly, for more than four liters or uh, four meter segments, uh, the taxes range between 40 to 43 percent and for the largest one it is over 50 percent so that uh, adds a lot to the cost and therefore the demand also is more geared towards the sub four meter segment and most of the launches there also are coming um, actually Manglam what are some of the key launches that viewers have to look forward to well you said FI22 had 57 launches yeah. uh, this year so far we've had some really successful launches let's talk about the launch pipeline the stars so to say pull all of them up for you most of them belonging to the sub four meters category you have uh, the Hyundai Ionic, we have MG ZS EV, the electric vehicle coming in out there. The updated Hyundai Creta, because this was the one that caused the flutter in the market when it first launched. And then we also have, of course, because it's the updated Hyundai Creta, we have an updated Kia Seltos also coming in. And that's not all. We have a couple of newer players coming in too. So we have the new Honda SUV, which is likely. We have the Citroen C3 Mini SUV, the five-door Mahindra Thar. Mahindra was, uh, the Thar was one of the biggest draws that we saw in the recent past with uh, regards to the new updated launch and Maruti Jiminy this one I, I like the color on this one though I like uh, the name of it I like the name well okay so you, you you can buy it for the name I'll just ride around once a while Maruti Jiminy talking about Maruti itself let's let's ask Shashank Shashank how many SUVs are you planning to launch and how much will these new SUVs contribute to your sales going ahead so the contribution of Maruti uh, uh, SUVs to Maruti sale is just uh, around 10% Whereas uh, uh, in the industry, it is about 41, 42 percent uh, uh, currently. Uh, so if you look, if you remove the Maruti numbers, then for the competition, more than 60 percent is SUV. So it's both an opportunity um, and a threat. Of course, we have to increase our percentage of the SUV. But at the same time, if we are able to do well, then 60 uh, percent of the competitor uh, sales can be affected because uh, their SUV percentage is very large. So it's an opportunity as well. So that is as far as the uh, percentage of sale of uh, uh, SUV is concerned. Uh, on the other uh, part about um, the new introduction in the SUV segment, uh, we will be introducing uh, a couple of SUVs uh, um, in this financial year. And uh, uh, exact details I'm not able to reveal at, the, at, the, the, at this moment, but uh, clearly they will be in a space where the SUV segment itself has grown very large. So you can expect some action in the entry SUV uh, segment uh, with regard to that. All right, let's take a short break now. Up next, we continue our focus on the India SUV drive. What's fueling this love affair? And we will also take a closer look at some of the speed bumps that may slow down the SUV drive and also, of course, look at the bigger question. And that is, is the love for SUV structural in nature or will it change? Welcome back, you're watching Mad About Markets and today we're talking about India's insatiable love for SUVs and whether this love is here to stay or is it going to be feeble. To talk more about that, let's bring in the yays and the maze as always and uh, Manglam, why don't you go ahead. The yays and let's bring it in. There we have it, uh, uh, the yays and maze car comes in and the yay door opens first because the first big yay that we have for SUVs now are yeah. they're both affordable hmm. and attractive as against the ones of the year which were very boxy and extremely expensive. I take your point, but Mangalam, what is the first thing a buyer asks when buying a car? Kitna deti hai. And that is quite low for SUVs, isn't it? That is, I mean, as far as mileage is concerned, it is low, but the GST differential has led to an increased demand for sub four meter compact SUVs, which are better mileage giving than, you know, the bigger ones, gas guzzlers. Perhaps, but you have to take into account the fact that the share of petrol only models is increasing and that means consumers have to shell out more money for these SUVs because of the rising fuel costs. They do have to shell out more money, but for, uh, you know, the experience that an SUV provides specifically on Indian roads. Globally, they're known for off-roads, but mm. Indian roads are as good as off-roads for these cars. And these, these conditions are, you know, perfect for an SUV. 
But you know, not all roads in India will be ideal for it because a lot of times you deal with narrow roads and these big SUVs may not be the most ideal car. And that's why you make it compact, but that's on the road. The important part is inside a car, Indians travel with big families and a lot of luggage, maximum space in an SUV is what we like as against, uh, you know, other cars which may not have as much space. Well, maximum space and maximum comfort, but, you know, these slightly bigger SUVs you need for that kind of comfort also attract a higher GST and then again, a higher cost. There's no take away from that, you know, higher taxes for slightly bigger cars. But mm. for, if you're looking at a smaller car, there is a fair amount of price overlap. I mean, for the same True. price of a smaller hatchback or a slightly medium-sized sedan, you mm. can get an SUV. And for all the good reasons, people may choose SUVs and they have been choosing SUVs. Well, you know, but SUVs are not really exempt from what the entire industry is facing. And that is the semiconductor shortage, yeah. the rising fuel prices, all of that is impacting the SUV market as well and it doesn't help that the world is moving towards EVs but SUVs which are the most popular segment by far don't have enough options yet. That's correct. So, so we need to find out whether you know there are enough EV options or not and whether they are coming and the range anxiety issues that EVs have. Well that is just one of the many challenges uh, Manglam but let me put that question to Shashank because you know besides the obvious ones that we've outlined so far what do you think are the key hindrances for the growth of the SUV segment? Uh, for the SUV segment, of course, uh, we have to see because SUVs, um, uh, uh, one obviously is the fuel efficiency. Uh, the SUVs don't give that sort of fuel efficiency which you find in hatches. That seems to have been overcome a little bit with the uh, product offerings like the Grand Vitara with the strong hybrid, the intelligent electric uh, hybrid that we have launched, which gives excellent fuel efficiency. But uh, I think going forward uh, in the in the mid SUV segment, which has a large percentage of diesel at the moment, uh, that would also be a hindrance because uh, going forward with the RD norms coming in next year, I think diesel uh, will be a little tough to, to sell and uh, those manufacturers who have a large percentage of their sale in diesel might have that issue. So I think there are multiple challenges uh, facing the, uh, the SUV industry going forward. But at the moment, it seems to be on a roll. The last couple of years, in fact, has been really galloping just around 26% of the market to now almost 42%. So um, uh, I think uh, challenges uh, will come. And uh, uh, although uh, SUV is in a good spot at the moment, and I would expect that um, uh, since the GST rates for the uh, four meter SUVs are uh, uh, that 28 percent, that could be a challenge going forward. Um, uh, just in case, uh, you know, if you have uh, uh, GSTs, uh, uh, you know, revised upward for uh, to the other categories of SUVs. Take your point, Shashank, out there. But now the time for the bigger question: Is India's love for SUVs structural? Is it changing? Well, we do have Shashank and Tarun's takes on this. Shashank, first you go. So, um, um, it's a great question, I think, and we have also been debating this internally. I think uh, when we look at uh, other countries, Latin America, um, uh, China, Brazil, uh, the other uh, European countries, we've seen SUVs uh, gaining traction up to around that 50% mark, where they seem to level off. Uh, so uh, rarely is there a country which has got uh, a unipolar sort of segmentation. In other words, um, there is there, there will always be segments uh, which are strong and there will be segments which are niche. In case of India, I think it will be the hatches, which is still about 38-39% of the market, and the SUVs, which are the two uh, large segments which we have seen in recent times. Uh, hatches were always very large. So I think that would continue. You will see a bipolar sort of uh, segmentation in the Indian market with hatches being a large segment and also because of the demography of our country and the nature of our economy. And the second part, which is the uh, SUV uh, part, which we expect to continue to grow from here from about 42-40% that it is of the market today to around that 50-48-50% mark uh, in, in about four years' time. On the question of whether this trend is structural or temporary, uh, I think there is a little bit of structure involved in this because the preference for SUVs has also been fueled by the road conditions where people want a larger ground clearance that SUVs offer and a much more commanding road presence and also a flexibility of usage of uh, the space which SUVs allow. So I think a bit of it is uh, design preference because 
of uh, the of the of the of the uh, nature of consumer thinking and that uh, trend is accelerating as we have seen in the last few years but uh, i would say around that 48 50% mark you could see in plateau and see the other uh, segments also coming up look i would say that while the percentages are in favor of suvs but if you see the indian market the hatch or the sedan market is also uh, substantial so i don't think there is anything okay the, the market is finishing or such in fact if you see hyundai we launched the verna and the aura in the sedan space we have we launched the i20 in the hatch space so i think the market is here to stay india the car penetration is still in the uh, early 30s per thousand so there is a lot of opportunity and uh, i believe for for one that uh, uh, opportunities are everywhere but yes more launches you will see and more focus you will definitely see in the suv space much like the global trends where uh, you know uh, this, this this is very clearly available whether it is us or europe all right tarun shashank gorav and bertrand all four of you thank you very much for your time here on mad about markets with that we've come to an end of the show uh, we'll wrap this up and see you same time next week drive away